Welcome back to the NJCPA Issues Watch podcast here live at the NJCPA convention 2024 here in AC. On this episode, I'm joined by a man who really needs no introduction for anybody in the NJCPA world, but but Joe Hunt, why don't you give us a brief introduction of you, your firm, and your activities? Yeah. Thanks, Sean. Thanks for for having me. Absolutely. Um, My name is Joe Hunt. I'm an assurance manager at Clifton Larson Allen, um, and I'm really uh, humbled and honored to serve as the the chair of the Emerging Leaders Council um, for the State Society. So that's honestly... um, a role that I found myself in, to, in, in because of other people that have sort of lifted me up, mm-hmm. um, which is which is really really cool. And we're focused on a ton of things yep. um, with the with the council, sure. um, and looking forward to kind of tackling those things and and seeing where this year takes us. Awesome, awesome stuff, Joe. And I can personally vouch for Joe. He's very active, very engaged in every aspect of the NJCPA and CPA activities overall. So. At the convention this year, right? The overall theme is, I would, I would say, storytelling, yeah. right? How to, how to basically not pitch yourself, right? But to basically convey a authentic mm-hmm. and accurate version of you, your firm, and how accounting is changing, right? And as somebody who's who sort of elbows deep in there on the Emerging Leaders Council, how is that going? One and two. Um, what are your thoughts on how this convention this year differs as opposed to past ones? My, my story really starts with um, an, an accounting uh, teacher in my sophomore year of high school. And I always like to, to shout her out, Gina Nigara. That's, that's okay. the start of my story. Okay. Um, and I think when it comes to people communicating their stories, it's always important to shout out where, where their beginning was. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, but I think we're doing... I think we're doing a good job of it. I think it just really comes down to when you're when you're sharing your story with um, with other people in the profession or, or students. It, it comes down to making making it known that okay, there's there's really a lot of different ways that mm-hmm. your story isn't and you, the path that you had isn't just the, the only one because mm-hmm. um, there's a lot of traditional paths, there's a lot of non traditional paths, just in in terms of getting to um, being a part of the profession. Sure, but the you know, making making it known to to students and, and people that there are so many different ways, um, and there's so many different stories. I think we're doing a good job of that. Okay. Um, I think we're doing I think we're doing a really good job of that. And I'd say this convention um, so far has been has been different from others in the fact that in a good way, in a great way, in a, a great good way. way. Okay. In a great, On the record. Yeah. Good yeah, way. Yeah. Absolutely. In a great way. Um, it's been it's been I think full of full of inspiration in, in terms of yesterday morning, um, Kimberly Ellison Taylor is, mm-hmm. is kicking it off. Yeah. And I thought that was just the best way to, to kick off the convention. I was just inspired. And then she came and spoke at the Emerging Leaders lunch. Yep. Um, that lunch has usually just been an opportunity for people to get together sure. and just kind Network of talk. Network and chit-chat, yeah. That sort of thing. But she really, you know, gave people some really tangible tools in, mm-hmm. in terms of like, here's here's what I did. Here was my story. You know, yep. She shared her story. Yeah. Here's some things that you know you can take from that, mm-hmm. but also like forge your own path as well. Um, yeah. So I'd say very inspiring. Um, speakers have always been moving, but um, I think her her speaking um, and her hearing her story and her background and where she came from and, and how she got to where she is was was really inspiring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so yeah, I mean, absolutely. You know, and having people come here in person mm-hmm. to one share right how how they did it right because because it's awfully easy to say in the abstract like we we have to do a better job at telling our story Mm -hmm. about tax work audit work advisory services but to have people actually come and tell you how they sort of got to where they are and it's almost always a non-traditional pathway Mm -hmm. and so i think having that real life actionable expertise is always great Mm -hmm. And so, on the other hand, right, there are quite a few sessions here at the convention on AI. And obviously, AI is the super hot topic. It's been top of mind for everybody 
in the field since OpenAI launched launched their ChatGPT uh, tool back in what December of twenty two. Yeah. So on the ground, right? Yeah. How big of a deal is AI for yeah. people working in assurance services or the attestation side? Yeah, yeah. I'd say there's two there's two really big things on the ground that that um where AI is just totally disrupting the, the profession. Um, and he's going to turn us, I think, um, I think Kimberly actually said it yesterday, like we're, we're going to be a digital, this mm-hmm. is, this is turning into a digital profession very, yep. very quickly. Yep. Um, over the next five to seven years, a lot of the things we're doing can, can be done by AI. So mm-hmm. two, so two really, really big things, open AI using chat GPT. Sure. Um, it, it really starts the conversation on a lot of solutions that, you know, very complex things, but at least get you, get you going down the right path. Correct. Um, so that's nice because it starts the conversation with a client. It starts the conversation towards a solution mm-hmm. a lot sooner. Um, and it at least gets us the, the path might not be so many lefts and rights, mm-hmm. but more, um, a little more straightforward, okay. um, which is, which is cool. And then I think AI, um, also the biggest thing on the ground is, um, really helping us put together a lot of our deliverables, um, let less, less thinking about the transactional stuff and more thinking about beyond the numbers. What are, what does this mean? How does this impact mm-hmm. organizations? Um, for me specifically, I'm working with nonprofit clients. Mm-hmm. What are these numbers mean, and how can we help them help more people? Um, those are the uh, those are the big the big impacts. Um, in a nutshell, AI is disrupting the profession mm-hmm. and making this about how are we? Do you have a good grasp and understanding of the numbers um, and what these mean? And that's kind of how I try to translate like sure. why people should. Um, why people should get into accounting yeah. because you're not just thinking about the numbers. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, they're important and of course. and you need those and that's the basis of what we're talking about, but you're making real impact and, and long lasting change and differences in those organizations when you understand mm-hmm. the numbers um, and when you understand the numbers and what they mean for that organization. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And so, so a core theme that, that I've seen quite a bit heard yeah. about over the last now five or 10 years is that for a long time, mm-hmm. right? For, for the last 20 years, everybody who's a CPA at every conference journal has always been saying, we collectively have to move out of that you know, compliance role, totally. doing the tax work, doing the audit work into that trusted business advisor. Mm-hmm. And now, yeah. you know, and now the actual tools have caught up, yeah. right? To, to all of our hopes and the, uh, aspirations yeah. now tools like ai or rpa automation blockchain whatever mm-hmm. all of them have gotten user friendly enough yeah. right to allow us to automate or to augment our our current operations yeah yeah i do dream about ai though you can say that hopes and dreams i dream about it hopes and dreams about yeah. ai so yeah. joe that's how we end up with things like uh skynet yeah. and uh and the how so just mm-hmm. fyi keep that in mind right? <laughs> um so as we're here at the convention and obviously our episode right here is going to get posted afterwards yeah so so for folks watching this hopefully after after this this is all wrapped up mm-hmm. right how would you pitch or how would you tell the uh story of why coming to the convention is worth it in yeah. terms of time and all the rest right because everyone's busy i get it Joe yep. gets it, yep. but how would you pitch this this convention in terms of being a really valuable use of three and a half days? Yeah, yeah. Um, I was I was meeting with. I think there's a lot of new attendees here this year. I would say so. Great, yeah, which was great. When yeah. I think that question was asked in the poll, and everybody yeah. in the in the, in yep. the music box like raised their hand. First time attendees, yeah. ton of first time yeah. attendees. Yeah. And I was I was sitting with some of them last night, and what I was sharing with them was this membership organization is very much. Um, how, how is, how are, you know, you've done it for me. How, how are you helping bring me up? How am I helping bring up somebody else? Yeah. Um, so I feel like the entire three days while we're here, it's constantly, you're making connections with people that mm-hmm. all they want to do is lift you up. Yeah. Um, so whether th- that you could be you personally, that could be your organization, mm-hmm. that could be, um, maybe it's a client of yours that needs some help. You know, um, I feel like I could reach out to some people in the nonprofit community that are here. And if I had a technical issue, if I had a cl- issue with a client that, that, um, I could use their help with, they're going to help me there. Mm-hmm. Um, so the reason it's worth it is because the connections you're making here, um, are only going to help you. And, and there's just these 
people here that are that are always trying to help uh, bring you up the the state society is helping bring up our profession mm -hmm. yep. um you couldn't have a better support system in yep. terms of advocacy in terms of legislative um initiatives and those types of things everybody is just focused on how can i help the person next to me how can i help the organization that that, that person's working at how can i help the interest group or chapter that that person works with it's always focused on somebody else mm -hmm. um, and, and trying to help them that's why i think it's worth it i feel like when i was new to the state society and new to to the firm um both alan sobel and brad munez were mm -hmm. like this organization and the people in it have done yep. more for me than any one specific person in my entire career mm -hmm. and i've uh that couldn't be that couldn't be uh more spot on well said yeah. well said and and i have to say that i think you and i first really sort of linked up what at a annual convention i think back in 22 i think so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah proof right here too yeah but Joe, it was an absolute blast having you on. And it's always great to be able to actually catch up with people yeah. in person outside of just hopping on a Zoom call or a meeting. So yeah. I was really happy to have you on this episode. Yeah. And I know, and I, I do know that we have a full day here left. So I'm totally. sure our paths are going to cross again. Yeah. Thanks All for right. having me. Absolutely, Joe. Thank you for coming on. Yeah. I'm thrilled to be joined today on site at the NJCPA 2024 convention by Philip Sukram a colleague and friend who I don't think needs an introduction for anybody anybody who, um, focusing on the pipeline and efforts to to fix that and also more efforts to to bring in new faces and sort of you know, new blood into our field. So Phil, I want to give us a, a quick introduction of you and your uh, firm or institution. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks, Sean. Uh, nice to meet everybody. I'm Professor Philip Sukram. I'm an accounting professor at St. Peter's University. I've been there the last six years. Uh, I'm also the director of the Masters of Accounting program. And uh, St. Peter's is a Jesuit university in, located in Jersey City, uh, Hispanic Servant Institute, and is now celebrated 152 years. So longstanding history in New Jersey. That's impressive. And as somebody born and raised in West New York, yeah. Hudson County too, I know immediately where it is, right? On, uh, J on J Kennedy. J yep. Yeah, right on Kennedy. So, you know, with that background and sort of day-to-day -day expertise, you know, obviously the, the whole pipeline issue is a hot topic at every conference, every you journal, every you gathering. And so are the efforts currently being implemented, right, at St. Peter's and at other institutions for trying to figure out more options, right, to have students hit the 150 either in the classroom, in the workplace, or some hybrid approach? How is that going? Just anecdotally? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think um, I think progress is being made. Mm -hmm. Obviously, progress sometimes is always slow in the yeah. short term. Sure. We have to track it over a long term of trend. Course. But I think we're really taking a considerable effort, especially at St. Peter's, to we cater to first generation students. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're known for social mobility. Sure. Um, I think that our profession of accounting is one of the professions out there that's absolutely there for social mobility yeah. and the ability to go from maybe a service based job to getting an office job, maybe doing bookkeeping an opportunity mm -hmm. to get uh, health benefits. Mm -hmm. I think I think we do a great job of getting our students the requisite skills they need to be able to land that first job. Because we all know that first job can play a pivotal role in what a long, illustrious, successful career can be. Mm -hmm. And I think we're just really trying to prepare our students. I mean, that transition from college to full-time work is a major transition That's for amazing. many people. Yes. Um, it's not only just uh, not having the summers off, but <laughs> shifting, adjusting to 40 hour work week sure. and the expectation of being there every day. I think that's a transition that we're really trying to work on mm -hmm. and just not only giving our students not only the hard skills, sure. but also the soft skills of communication, how to be professional, how to sure. show up on time. I think all of those things are instrumental, especially as a new student entering the workforce. Absolutely. And, you know, the sort of the core theme of the convention this year is how to basically tell your own story, yes. right? Be it for you or your firm or for all of us working in the field. Absolutely. And so as we get more and more, you know, automation, AI, blockchain, you know, all that into the workforce, into tax advisory, audit stuff, you know, having those soft skills or business skills, really, yeah. right? How to communicate, how to empathize, and and to how to work with people, yeah. right? Right, because more and more, 
there are people entering into the accounting finance world from a non-traditional pathway. But but I keep hearing that non-traditional more and more and more. So so to me at least, that line between the you know, traditional pathway and then the non-traditional, that's really becoming blurred. Yeah. I think, right? And having those options, right, to one, you learn how to do audit engagements, tax returns, risk assessments, cyber engagements, that's absolutely critical. But as we automate and augment more, having that ability to communicate, Mm -hmm. I think is really, really critical. And I know back on, I guess it was Tuesday night, Phil and I were talking, that, that at this that at this uh, you know, conference this year, there is, I think, a palpable higher level of energy. Yes, right. Absolutely. Energy, no enthusiasm, doubt. whatever you want to call no it. No doubt. Energy, enthusiasm. And so just having been here during the convention, why do you think that is? You know what? One thing that I love about the NJCPA is just it's just filled with great people. Mm-hmm. Great people who happen to be in the accounting profession or around it it's so great to be around so many people who are in the same path as you um striving to get to whatever that next level is and ultimately you know we we understand that uh what you know is extremely important but Mm -hmm. also having an advocate or someone that can show you the pathway or that can be an advocate for you in rooms that you're not in i think that's um i think that's one of the biggest things that the convention brings. Mm-hmm. I always look forward to seeing everybody here. I look I look forward to seeing you. And even though we have, you know, everybody's busy, we're always yeah. doing so many things, but I think people really appreciate the deep relationships that we have with each other, not only on the professional mm-hmm. side, but also caring for each other, yeah. the whole person um, <clears throat> throughout this whole process, even during the social moments too. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. and honestly, I always tell people, yeah, you know, right, because all of us are busy, yeah. right? There are time constraints, budget constraints, work constraints, the home life constraints. Yeah. And I always tell people that that it's well worth the the two and a half, three days to come down here and to and to just meet everybody oh, in person, right? To, right. Yeah. So Phil and I are texting, we're on email, yeah. you know, I go to um, his stuff, he comes to mine. But you know, having this opportunity to really sort of not not hang out, but to interact. Yeah. over a extended period of time does add depth absolutely right? and well, echoing on your point having 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 that technical knowledge is imperative but it's also great to have a have a network right yes. the old phrase your network is your net worth yeah. i think is oh. only going to become more important as those tasks mm-hmm. and those hard skills can be more and more automated then it's going to be up to us to basically figure out how all of us can you know basically stand out yep yeah. And so to wrap up our, our quick on-site episode here, um, if you had to summarize in like 90 seconds to a person, you know, either student in the workplace, in academia, right? Why to come to the convention, right? Just in 90 seconds, go. Oh, man. There's so many things about what's so great about this convention. I mean, it's not only the excellent sessions and the experts that we have speaking, but I really do appreciate just the people that I see, the smiles on the faces, looking at the employees from the NJCPA yeah. who have worked extremely hard to put on this fantastic event, Very hard. Uh, especially at the Borgata. I mean, it's just, it, it's hard to describe the feeling, but there is such a fantastic energy here. I, I've had a thrill and blast the last three days. Um, and just even seeing everyone really recharges me. And um, I think there's so many different sessions we can learn. And I think even I'm looking forward, we talked about this before, I'm looking forward to the social security session because yeah. I have, you know, I've got aging parents and yeah. this is an area that I don't have expertise in because yeah. I'm, you know, a little further away from retirement, <laughs> but the ability to even be here and learn that is yeah. invaluable to me. And I think every year there's kind of different sessions mm-hmm. that yeah. pique your interest, whether it's in their subject matter base or maybe it's professional development, but, um, just honestly seeing the people here is just fantastic. Seeing their smiles, feeling their energy, giving them a hug, giving them a dab. It's just, um, it really has energized me and I, I can't miss it. Well said, Phil. And I know, I always tell people that after after being here for this week, I always go home feeling you know jazzed up and I, yeah. and I have new ideas yeah. and sort of new ways to 
address problems, tackle mm-hmm. issues, but but it's being here, being around this like you know, collective yeah. uh, you know, expertise. Absolutely, right? and and it really is a a experience that you really can't miss. And so, Phil, it was an absolute pleasure having you here on this podcast again. Issues Watch podcast live at the 2024 convention. Phil, always a pleasure seeing you. Always a pleasure, Sean. Thanks, Thanks man. Appreciate it.